Welcome back to Coding Shorts. I'm Sean. So C Sharp. I was thinking about this today that I've been doing C Sharp since about 2001, which if you do the math means I'm really old. And one of the things that has evolved over that time is how we deal with different variables. One of the things that makes some users uneasy, especially if they come from a language like JavaScript, is the idea of type inference. So we're going to sort of dive into what type inference is, how it works, and how it's useful. Let's get started. So I've got just a program.cs here, nothing special. And I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called x, and then a string I'll just call y. I haven't done anything magical. You can see we're getting little underscores because I haven't used them in anything, and that's fine. If we just write line, we can say x is x, and y is y. And because of this, the value of these, the value of x, is just a local variable of type int, and this is of type string. Nothing surprising there, really. What's interesting in the C sharp I started back in 2001, we had to do it this way. We didn't yet have that magic var keyword. Now, it's an important to understand what is actually happening with the var. The var is saying, I can infer, I can guess what the type is based on what is on the right hand of the assignment. So in this case, x, it knows it's a number, and in fact, it's going to default that this number is a 32-bit number, right? And that this will be a string. And if, in fact, if we hover over them again, you're going to see that it's correctly guessed it was an integer, and it's correctly guessed that it is a string. But wait, what is it doing here? It's adding a nullability to that string. This is an interesting way they're handling it with nullable reference types. In essence, it's saying this could be nulled, so we could make it null, but we know that it's not null at this time. So you don't need to do any special trick there. But for pretty much any reference type, using var is going to get you a nullable version of whatever value it is it's guessing. And this works the same way as giving us actual types. Like if I do D, suddenly this is a double. Or if I do M, this is a decimal. And what's interesting is if I do something like double here, it will, even though I haven't decorated this, it will say, okay, you've declared this as a double. I'm going to allow that double to be initialized with a zero because I already know it. And so you have a choice with simple scalar types where you want to define that. Most of us aren't worried about number and string values, right? They represent a lot of the data we have, but that's not really where this comes in. So back in 2001, I would do something like memory stream, new memory stream, right? And I might use this by just saying position equals zero. So in this case, what it's doing here is exactly what you would expect. It's very clear what's happening here. Though the duplication of stream on the other side is a little confusing. What if you actually wanted to treat this as a stream in which the memory stream derives from stream so we can make that change there? But if we do var, unsurprisingly, we'll actually see that this stream is now memory stream question mark, because it knows it's a memory stream because of this part of the thing that is using to be assigned, right? It's taking that information, and of course, because it's a var, they're all going to be nullable unless you explicitly. What if you don't want to deal with it being nullable? You could still go memory stream, right? And, and I believe it's C sharp 10 introduced, maybe it was eight, that you could now do this, which is also type inference in some ways, right? What it's doing is it's saying, you want a memory stream, and I know that you want a memory stream, therefore I'm gonna assume that if you say new and then parentheses with any initializers, that this has to be a memory stream constructor. 
right? It has to be because you're saying this is a memory string here. Doesn't mean you can't still do I want a stream here, which of course will fail because there's no public constructor for stream. And so I'd still have to go back and do. So with this in mind, there's something that I want to make crystal clear. This is inferring type. This isn't a variable type. When you define this, this X will be and always be an integer. This will always be a stream. Even if we do var stream, what happens if we try to say stream equals hello, right? That's not gonna work because it's still doing type checking. All this does is add some syntactical sugar so you don't have to repeat yourself as often. And honestly, I think I know where this is coming from. Let's just create a simple array and I'll call it items. And I'll just say one, two, three, right? Simple array, that always works. Now we can see that this is a string array with a question mark, of course, but what if we got rid of this? This can still infer, we can still see that this is gonna be a string array. And why is that? Because it was able to infer the different types here that we were talking about. And so type inference again is trying to minimize the amount of code you're having to write, especially when it's duplicative, right? But back to where I think variable inference really took off from I and items order by I dot, well, actually just by I, and then select I, right? When link queries came into the picture, we didn't want to have to understand what this was actually composed of. And in fact, in earlier versions of C-sharp, this was even more complex. A lot of work has gone in into making these a little simpler, but this kind of query might return very different objects. It might return an iQueryable, an iEnumerable, really depends on what this items is. Uh, iEnumerable works because it is just an array, but in other cases, you might get something very different, right? So if I now say var results equals query to array, right? Again, this is picking up what the actual type is. And for writing a lot of this code, this is where things started to change. Some developers that were stuck in sort of the .NET 1.1, 2.0 world, which were a lot for a long time, they never matured their C-sharp from that. And we start seeing a divergence of how we're writing code. Is there anything wrong with this? No, if you decide you wanna write your code and make it really clear by making sure you know what all types you're dealing with here, you know, even making it nullable if you want, right? That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. In, a, in some ways, this type inference can really help you like this can get really ugly really quick if you're dealing with a very complex sort of inference of an, of an object. But we do have sort of a problem. And so let's come down here and make a method. This could be in a class, but we're not gonna do it in a class. And I'm gonna return a stream and I'll say get stream. And I'm just gonna return new memory stream, right? Perfectly valid. And if I come up here and say get stream, right? Let's go back to inference. This code isn't as clear, right? Unless this is well named, which it happens to be in this case, and we can see what's being returned, the var hides the specifics of what this actually returns. Is that important? It might be. So you're gonna to wanna to decide whether this is really what you want, right? Because methods we call are going to dictate what is returned. And only by hovering on this can you actually see what is returned from that. That might be good enough, but it does not make the code easier to read. So another thing I just wanna mention about type inference, are you curious that we don't need the question mark here? So here, if we go ahead and old position equals stream dot position, because this is nullable by default, you can of course be turning that off and that's a whole nother discussion. Why doesn't it require me to put a question mark here, right? The problem really comes down to the way the compiler works with nullability and it does affect 
the way the inference works. So we don't need it here because even though this is nullable, the compiler knows that it's not null. And so you don't need to check it. So you might imagine thinking you need to do if stream is not null, right? And being able to do that. But this part is assumed if we assign something directly to the stream. This is only true because the stream is not nullable when it's returned, right? It's using that information to infer the type. Of course, if this did return a question mark, this stream would still be a question mark, right? Because But because this returns it, the compiler doesn't know that it's not null here. And so the way that this is a nullable value, you really don't need to treat it like a nullable value unless the things you're calling are returning nullable objects, right? One of the early uses for the var keyboard was actually was anonymous types, right? And so this object ends up being an anonymous type, and you'll see that dash A that it means it's an anonymous type, but it knows the shape, right? It knows the shape is some object dot ID is valid or sentiment C sharp. Let's make it all Pascal cased. Otherwise, someone is gonna really hate me. But using anonymous types here, which are hard to pass and do things, inference also allows us to deal and use tuples in other places where we might use anonymous types. So let's do the same thing. Another object equals ID name. So what is this other object? The other object is a tuple that contains those two pieces of information. So I could say right line other object dot name, right? But perfectly valid. And this is in fact a type, right? This shape is the type. And if this shape is the type, we don't have to have this var, though var does make it simpler. We could actually say int string. That tuple is the type. And of course it's complaining here because this type doesn't have these names in it. And that's why this is all complaining. So what we could do, of course, is say int id name. And then we don't need the names here. So this might be clearer to you than what I was doing before, but in this case, it's not using type inference. It's actually using a strongly typed tuple in this case. And what does this allow us to do? It also allows us to break the tuple apart when we want to. So imagine ID name equals other object. Oh, what does that do? Well, that's an interesting syntax. Again, using the var keyword is allowing us to say, hey, this is an int and this is a name because that is the type of this other object. So we can now use these as local variables, even if they were passed in. And anonymous types get into trouble because they can't easily be passed. But tuples can. Tuples, you can have tuples for return types, you can have tuples as parameter types. And so suddenly, instead of having to create that two field class that pollutes the number of classes in your system, you can actually have these complex objects that are typed, but not named classes or named records or named struct. And all of this is powered by type inference. So where does that put us? I've talked about a lot of little use cases and hopefully you can get a sense of what, and hopefully you can get a sense of the story that I think is important here. And that is using the var keyword isn't evil. You're probably using type inference in some cases, even if you're not using the var keyword. Var doesn't mean it doesn't have a type. It just means that the type is defined when it's declared. That's a very different thing. So this doesn't get around having to have a known type at compile time. If you need unknown types at compile time, that could be different sorts of objects. Dynamic types can help you there. But a lot of people don't use those very often because C Sharp invariably is a typed language. And type inference just makes our code a little bit easier to read. It doesn't change the fundamentals of everything having a type and the compiler checking those types. Hope that makes sense. Thanks for watching this far. Of course, I'm gonna ask you to like and subscribe, share, whatever you can do, to help the channel. I really appreciate it. We've doubled in size over the last year, year and a half, and that means quite a lot to me. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. 
go ahead and comment down below if you have a question or if I got something wrong or you disagree with the way I'm thinking. Let's have that conversation down in the comments. This has been Sean Wildermuth for Coding Shorts. See you next time.